Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Dev's Kingdom. This is Jacob. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to run large model with VLLM. So VLLM is a high throughput and memory efficient inference and serving engine for LLMs. So when you have a large model and you cannot fit into one GPU, so VLLM help you to run those models on multiple GPUs. So basically it's called distributed inferencing, so which is very cool. So in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to run DeepSeq R1 models on VLLM with distributed inferencing. So, and also we're going to run this on Kaggle for uh, Kaggle free GPUs. So, uh, if you're excited, let's get started. So, let's create a notebook on Kaggle.com and basically uh, just first check all the configurations. So, check your NVCC version, Conda and Python version. We already did. And also the NV at SMI. So, CUDA version is 12.6. That's good. Also, make sure you also check the uh, PyTorch CUDA version. So it's different than the CUDA version, um, but it's a PyTorch CUDA version. So you can see that's 12.1. So that's also fine. And then we'll have to install VLLM. And VLLM just uh, install the transformers and also diffuse accelerate from the hugging face repo. After that, make sure you install Py uh, Torch 2.5.0 and Torch Region as 0.20 and also Torch Audio as 2.5.0 from CUDA 12.1 repo. Okay, so and also make sure that you import uh, the OS and also uh, add those environment variables. So uh, the VLM version is the latest. It's on 066 post one. You can go to the VLM repo. So you can see that latest release is 066 post one. So let's go back to Kaggle. So the CUDA version specifies CUDA 12.1. So this is one that we actually use to download the Torch series. All right, and then make sure that you do an echo to see this is actually the right version that you set. Then you install VLM. So make sure you uh, use the versions that you set. All right, so this is a VLM with the latest version from CUDA version, which is uh, CUDA 12.1. So and uh, after that, make sure you do a pip uninstall and install. So uh, somehow the PYNVML uh, uh, has an issue with Kaggle, so you do need to uninstall that first and then install the NVIDIA MLPY. So that's it. And after that, if you don't have Triton, make sure you also install Triton. Um, but since it's already installed, and uh, so that's fine. And after that, make sure you install Ungrok. So to turn all everything out uh, to the public URL. So um, we demo this in many of the videos. So make sure you just create a run uh, function to run command within uh, Python. Also, make sure you do the uh, pip install pyngrok and ngrok. Then you get your ngrok token from ngrok console. If you don't have an ngrok uh, account, register for free and then paste the token here. And after that, uh, just make sure you connect your ngrok public URL. In this case, it would be 386p to the localhost 80. So, ladies, Nginx for. So, I'll show you how to undo that. So, first install Nginx. And after that, make sure you create an Nginx uh, configuration for VLLM. Uh, so then make sure you point the port 80 to the uh, local host 8000, which is where uh, VLLM service uh, is going to run. So then you can access the public uh, URL and it will point to the uh, VLM local uh, port. So, and after that, make sure you run Nginx stop and start. So you can see Nginx is starting. And also you can see this is running. Uh, VM is running. Um, so let's go through the parameters. So if you want to run VLM, basically first accept the uh, steps that we mentioned above. Uh, you have to run the VLM service. This is going to spin up a RESTful service, uh, which is uh, OpenAI compatible. So which is very important. Uh, so first to make sure the NCCL P2P disabled is set to one. And also um, add, add the model name. In this case, we're testing DeepSeq AI from the DeepSeq uh, offshore uh, hugging face repo and also uh, the model we are testing is DeepSeq R1 Distill QN7B. You can find more DeepSeq uh, models from the DeepSeq AS offshore uh, hugging face repo but in this demo we're going to demo the DeepSeq R1 Distill QN7B. You can see the model size is already uh, almost 16 gigs so it's more than the T4 offers. So um, we have to um, basically uh, run the distributed inferencing. So in this case 
we basically use two GPUs. So you can see that uh, the GPU one has uh, 12 gigs uh, already being used. So per GPU, T4 GPU on Kego is 15 gigs. So in this setup, you will have 30 gigs uh, GPU um, rerun. So we already run 25 gigs. If you see see, see here, right? Let's uh, go back to the uh, Kego notebook. So um, so if you uh, have other models, you can also try it as well. So then first you have to add the model name, right? And then secondly, we have to change the uh, D type to flow 16. And then you can specify the API key. So you can specify any key you want. So this is basically like an open AI API key. Uh, you don't have to specify it, just specify it um, so that you can actually also have a, a security layer. And then after that, make sure um, you run this, add this tensor power low size because the two. So this will actually split the model into two GPUs instead of one. So which is the uh, very important part of the distributed inferencing. So make sure you set the tensor power low size to two. On Kaggle, if you have a, a local um, multi-GPU uh, machine, then you can specify a different mount. This is basically uh, the amount uh, for the total number of GPUs that's available. And also uh, make sure you use the enforce eager uh, parameter. So set to true. So just set the uh, enforce eager after that. Also, you can use the pipeline parallel size equals to one. So if you want to split the model into equally into two GPUs, uh, specify the tensor parallel size equals to two. If you um, somehow not able to split the model into equally into two GPUs or more GPUs, then you can use pipeline parallel size equals to um, two or three uh, based on the GPU uh, number of GPUs you have in your local machine. So, but the tensor parallel size and times the pipeline parallel size has to be the total amount of GPUs that you have available. So in this case, we have two GPUs. You can see in KO there are two GPUs. So um, we just set the tensor parallel size to the two. And so you can see that the GPU are split almost evenly, right? And then you can set enforce eager to true. The pipeline parallel size is one. So the total number of the um, this tensor parallel size and the pipeline parallel size is two. So that should be good. Then the CPU offload gig gigabytes is two. So basically offload two gigabytes of data uh, to the CPU. You don't have to specify that. I just specify this for demo purpose. So you can see this parameter is good if you don't have enough GPU VRAM. So uh, you can specify more if you have more uh, CPU available. Uh, you can see that uh, the total RAM that's used right now is 27 gigs. They have a total of 29 gigs of CPU RAM. So uh, we just offload two gigs just for demo. Then for the GPU memory utilization, we just set to 0 0.9. So you don't have to use it 100% so that you can actually have a little bit more room. And then after that, make sure you also set the max model length. So this is basically your context lens. So if you actually run coder, you need a bigger context lens. In this case, we're actually going to use climb uh, to demo the rest of it. So now uh, we need a max uh, model lens uh, bigger than the default one. So and then to set the trust remote code and to true. So that's it. If you want quantization, you can also specify quantization. It goes to add public or other uh, quantization methods uh, the VLN supports. You can check out the website to see what options available. And But we don't use this for this demo. You can also check that if you want to try this out. So that's all the parameters you have to set for VLN service. So after that, you can see this is already spin up. So uh, you can also use Climb or other AI coders uh, with this uh, service, spin up with the LLM. So let's uh, just go to this public URL that already spin up, So which is the uh, 386B. You can see this is already working. So this is actually uh, not authorized because it have an API key, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, if you, there's no API key, that should work. But right now, we I need to uh, specify the API key to uh, use this endpoint. So then copy this uh, URL and paste it into client. So we just uh, run client IDX. You can run this on Visual Studio, uh, on your local, on, on a virtual box, anywhere that you want to run. But in this video, we're going to just demo this on IDX. So then uh, if you don't have client installed, just go to the extensions, install client. So already installed the latest version, 3.2.5. And then we have an icon on the right side. You can click the icon and go to the settings. Then you basically just choose the API provider as API compatible. Then base URL as the one that you spin up, which is the 386 that you uh, added in here. Then the API key is the one that we actually added in this service. So you can see this is actually 
the one that we added for uh, token ABC123. You can use a different one, but we I just use the random string and put that API key in here. Then after that, make the old model ID is DeepSeek AI, DeepSeek R1, distill Q and 7 b You can use other models uh, for your purpose, but uh, this demo is just for DeepSeek R1, distill Q and 7 b So that's it, and click done. And then you can start testing. So red tested a few ones, you can see uh, basically, um, this is the one that we tested, and the other one we already tested is to create a AI company landing page. So it actually went pretty well. So if you copy the one that we already tested, um, you can copy everything, and let's uh, just copy it, and then we do trim it. So we can actually remove the coding here. So that should be good. You can see this is actually pretty good. Right, so it's actually everything is working, and but let's test it again so that you can see this is actually working. So let's uh, just copy everything from here, right, and also let's uh, close this one. Let's copy and paste. So, and then we can go back to the Kego notebook. You can see the client is running. Right, you can see the client is running. You can see the GPU is working. Both GPUs are working. So you can see the prompt from client. And you can see everything is working as expected. So you can see uh, the disk size is 34, almost 35 gigs. Uh, it is already being used. The RAM is 27 gigs. The GPUs are 12 gigs each. So you can see that's total about 25 gigs of uh, VRAM already inactive. So let's go back to IDX to see. So this is working. You can see this is actually uh, already generating the analysis and also it will write the code as we saw earlier. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, if you do like this video, please subscribe, like or comment if you have any questions. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and see you in the next one.